Mm. Hey fellas, welcome back to a new Prime Model Works headquarters video. Uh, ooh, it's been a while. I had a lot of people asking me about how I was doing and if I was doing, if I was sick or something. No, I'm not sick. I'm, I'm fine. Had a lot of stuff going on. Uh, I just built my first model of 2023. Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, this is the Hasegawa Harrier AV8B Harrier Plus 2619, whatever. Um, not a very good kit. In fact, I didn't even finish putting it all together. I mean, it looks finished, maybe. But uh, I didn't put any of the landing gear doors on. Uh, there was just so much that was messed up with this kit. And that's okay. Because since this is the first one that I built, I haven't built models in a while. And I... And I figured, you know, I'll build this um, just to, to get my seat, to get my legs back underneath me to see if I can still build a model. Heck, I didn't even know, if, you know, I'd lose all my super skills. But um, I didn't necessarily lose all my super skills, but I was a little rusty. And this, this helped me get back into shape because what we're going to build next is, or on this video, is Ming's F4G Phantom 2. Now... I think Mr. G from Mr. G's workbench had recommended that. He had sent me an email asking me how I was doing. And I think that's one of the kits he recommended. If not, somebody else did. But um, So yes, and I've started on this kit on the Phantom, and it is spectacular. It's a, it's, I'm actually having fun doing it. And, and I had fun building this thing. And I, I tried some experimentations on this. Uh, well, see that deck cord there? Uh, I printed that out with my 3D, or my, not my 3D printer, my, uh, Cricut. Um, and if you recall, if you watched the old, my original Harrier video where I built the 118th scale, I did the same thing, um, uh, print, printed out the deck cord in vinyl on the Cricut. However, it was, it was so big that it, it didn't, it wasn't that big of a deal, but I didn't know if I could shrink it down into 48th scale, and I did, and it worked out, so... Really cool. So I may, I may at some point try to build this kit again, knowing what I know now. Um, like the landing gear, the front landing gear is just cattywampus. It's, it wasn't straight when I put it together and I, I couldn't see how I could have put it together any differently. Um, but yeah, the painting, the, the painting of it turned out okay. I didn't do much weathering, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, enough about this. Thing. I'll probably throw it in the trash. Who knows? <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was a good experience. But anyway, let's go take a look at this Phantom that I've started. And I know a lot of other people have, have built one. Duke's Models has like a full... I don't think he's finished with his. Hmm. I don't know. So I don't know how much of this I'll show, but probably a lot. Who knows? I don't know. I have no idea what I'm doing. This is my first... Model video of the year. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at what I've been working on. Now, I've got some other subsets that I'm putting together just to get them out of the way. But uh, I went ahead and started with step one and putting together the cockpit. <clears throat> and I did something that I hardly ever do is I use the decals for the instruments. And I'll tell you what, they really did work out. So my buddy... um Darren from the Model Geeks podcast and the Grumpy Scale Modeler, he's building this one as well. And I saw him put the decals on, and Duke's Models used the decals as well. And uh, I'll tell you what, man, these look good. Oh, my gosh. It almost looks like, yeah, I am really impressed with how these went down. Now, I did do something a little bit different than I think what they did in their video, and I wish I would have shown it, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, so what I would do is I would put the decal down and then I would put a little bit of solva set on it and wait about a minute or two and then I would come back with a hair dryer on high heat for about five to seven seconds and I would heat that thing up and it was really hot and then I would come back with my brush and then I would just, oh, my brush has got stuff on it, and then I would just smooth it out. And that heat really softened that decal so I could smush it down 
And I'll tell you what, and then I put another coat of solve set on it. I had to do the heat thing like maybe two, two or three times per decal with some solve set. And I'll tell you what, man, they look good. I am really impressed with how those set down over all the, uh, the details in there. So anyway, I thought I'd touch on that. So what I'm doing now is uh, I'm going to go ahead and paint the rest of this stuff. And you've probably seen this before on my channel, but I like to paint with Vallejo model color. And the key to this is use this retarder medium. So I'm gonna put a little bit of retarder medium. Now I'm gonna start with black, because I need to paint some things on here that are black. I put a, I never know what color to use for the cockpit gray. Um, I just used like a dark ghost gray that I had from Tamiya, or that I'd mixed up. And I think it looks okay. And it's going to be down in the cockpit, so if it's off, you know, everybody has their own opinion on what. And I'm sure there's a specific color you're supposed to use, but I thought this looked about right from what I've seen. And I've seen various uh, different shades and depending on the picture. So, I don't know, here's what it is. So anyway, I'm going to throw down, put down some airbrush thinner. And I've got a couple different ones here because... Uh, I always seem to get one really dirty. Now I've got this Vallejo model color black. I'm just going to shake it up. I might have got a little too much thinner in there. <clears throat> but I'm going to put this in with my retarder medium. And my thinner. Okay. And this is going to allow me to put this on pretty thin. I've got all these brushes here, these real teeny tiny brushes. It's going to allow me to put this on really thin. And I just kind of mix this up by eye. And it's, I mean, I'm not going to get brush strokes because I don't want brush strokes. I've seen, you know, when I, when I first started modeling, you know, I would brush paint on, it would be thick. And I'd look at it when it was finished and I'm like, oh my God, there's a bunch of brush strokes on there. Ew, it's so icky. I'm just going to come along here. I think this top thing needs to be painted black. And I'm just going to let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. And when this dries, I should not get brush strokes. Yeah, I mix this up nice. I'm shaking them because of my coffee. Ugh, kind of hard to hold this and do it on camera, but we're going to try, fellas. This other top part in here may need to be supposed to be black, but we're just going to do it this way. I'm not exactly sure how much of this you're going to see as far as the back part of this little instrument panel here. I don't know if I should paint the whole thing black or not. I might as well, just in case. Not sure. It's been a while since I <clears throat> built a Phantom. I think the last Phantom I built was the 48 scale. <clears throat> was it the F4B from Tamiya? And, oh my gosh, good kit. I'll tell you what, this one's nice, though. The detail on this is nice. The way it goes together is pretty nice. I did spend a lot of time uh, yesterday um, removing the, the um, areas of the parts where the sprue joins up with stuff. I mean, that's obviously with any kit, but seemed like it was 
spend a lot of time doing that. So, okay, that's how I do the black. I've got another part that I've got to do here. Some other parts and stuff, and then the, the um, sticks. <laughs> Man, my allergies have been killing me this fall. Oh, my gosh. Like I probably have to go this far. Now, once I get the black down, then I'm going to come along and I'm going to dry brush, just to dull it down. I'll dry brush it with some gray or or tan or something, just to dull everything down. And then I'll come back in and I'll paint some of the little details on these, especially on these sticks. Might have got a little too much there. Now, if you get a little too much paint when it's this thinned out, it's fine. It'll just it'll just uh, level out. And again, all these little details, I don't I don't usually spend a whole lot of time in the cockpit because I usually button these up. And I'm not sure if I'm going to close up the cockpit on this or not. Uh, the seats on this kit are not very good, so I've ordered some uh, resin aftermarket seats, and I'm going to hopefully do those up really nice. I think those will look cool. So I may leave the cockpit open. I'm not sure. But uh, we'll figure that out. I'm going to... I'm going to plan on maybe trying to sell this on eBay if anybody wants it, if it turns out okay. If it doesn't turn out okay, then I won't sell it, but <laughs> I don't like selling stuff that I'm not happy with. But I think I think this is going to turn out to be a really cool kit. I also ordered some aftermarket decals because I want the SEA camouflage scheme. I just really like that. Ever since I was a little kid, I just liked the look of the the tan and the two-tone green camouflage on the F4 Phantoms, especially the Wild Weasels. Oh my gosh, it looks so cool. So I'm going to get on with painting this. Also on this other piece, um, Duke's models have pointed this out where the color just doesn't, it's kind of too bright. It's kind of toyish on these uh, screens, on these displays. So I'll probably just come in there with a darker green and paint the inside of those. But... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna get on with this and I will see you in a bit. Alrighty, fellas, so went ahead and painted that up and it looks okay. Looks a little bit better than that uh, bright cartoonish green. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to, I went ahead and I put a flat coat of Tamiya Flat Clear over everything just to dull down the decals because they were a little bit shiny and to protect the, the, uh, the paint underneath for the next step. Now, instead of like coming back with an oil wash and doing all that mess, getting my oil, pa oil paints out, I'm just gonna make an acrylic wash and I'm gonna use some of this matte varnish from Vallejo and some black and some water. So I've got some water over here. I'm gonna put that in here. Now I could use, and I have used in the past, airbrush thinner, but sometimes if I put it on too thin, it will blend the paints because the airbrush thinner obviously is going to melt the paint underneath. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to take some of this matte varnish from Boyo, throw it in here. And this is going to be like my carrier. Okay, I get a brush, dip it in the water, and I want to thin this out. Okay, and I'm going to take some black. Now, I'm not going to put the black in here. I'm going to put it on the side so I can control because you can get too much black in here. Yeah. If you make a mistake, this is going to be really hard to correct. Where with oil paints, you can you can remove it with some airbrush thinner. Ooh, I might have got too much. You can remove it with um, mineral spirits. But with this, I'm not going to be able to remove this because I'm using the same kind of paint underneath. So I've already went ahead and started on the front just to see how it worked out. And, uh, you know, and, and again, this is like in the cockpit and it's gonna be kind of buried. So you may not be able to see it. So I'll get some of this on my brush. I'm gonna come in here. And I'm just gonna coat the whole thing and let this go where it wants to go. Just to, just to uh, bring out some of those details. Not that you're going to see a whole lot again. And to dirty it up. Kind of give it more of a grimy, grimy look to it. Just 
Skip that. Come along here in the side walls. And you can do this with oil paints. I just didn't want to mess with them. Ah, I'm dropping stuff. I'm dropping stuff. Jesus. Can't even hold on to it. Now, I don't really want to get into the, like, the instruments and stuff. Because I don't want to, like, muddy those up. I think they look really good the way they are. So I don't really want to get into, like, the instrument panels that much. Come down here. Oops, got some on the air. Man, I'm just doing a mess today. Too much on here, so. Hey, you can somewhat remove this a little bit if you like dry your brush out and then soak up what's on there. So the, the more black you put in, the darker this is going to be. And I'm not wanting really dark. I'm just wanting it to somewhat bring up some of those highlights. Now with the water, using water instead of um, thinner, uh, it is it is not. It's going to react a little bit differently. It's not going to be as smooth, which is fine. But it may do different things if you use thinner. Like I said, I have used thinner, the airbrush, uh, thinner before. And it's it's worked out okay as long as you don't put it on too thick and try to rub it. Because once you put it on too thick and then you start, you know, moving it around, then it messes up the paint underneath. See, like up here, I get kind of like a watermark. Because it just doesn't flow as well. That's okay. It gives a little bit more character. And because I use this matte varnish, I'm probably not going to... Gosh, dang it, I can't hold on to this dang thing. Because I'm using this matte varnish, I'm not going to have to come over here and uh, and spray another flat coat on it. Uh, now, I, I used to use Future mixed with black and like black ink and stuff. And I would have to come back in and spray another flat coat because it was real shiny. But with this, I don't have to mess with that. And you can mix different colors other than black. I'm just using black because it's. I just want to dirty it up and bring out some of those, those details. So I'll hit this with a hair dryer and we'll see what it looks like. Okay. So there we go. I think I'm going to be happy with that. It kind of gives it that dirty, grungy look, but still brings out some of those highlights. So, um, all right. Next step is, uh, should I do some of this? I don't know. Next step, I'm going to come in, I'm going to dry brush, and I'll just show you quickly how I do that. That's uh, obviously dry brushing, but uh, um, I'll just show you how I do that because I hardly ever show that. All right, so now I'm going to do some dry brushing, and typically what I like to use is XF19 Sky Gray by Tamiya, and I'll just use the lid here, and I've got a paper towel, and then a soft brush. Now the key to this is to get most of the paint off. I'm just going to come in here. And just slowly build it up, being really light. If you don't get most of the paint off, what tends to happen is you'll get brush strokes. <laughs> and that's not something you want. Slowly build it up. I'm just hitting the paint's just going to fall off on the high areas. Now this part I think may may have supposed to have been gray, but I went ahead and painted it black. So forgive me if I did it wrong. I got too much paint on there. So 
It's as simple as that. Okay, go ahead and do the top of this. It's just gonna dull down that black, give it a worn look to it. It doesn't take much. Hit these knobs. Now, with the seats that I'm going to get, the resin aftermarket ejection seats, I'm going to, I don't know if they've shipped yet. I ordered them like, I don't know, four days ago, and it doesn't look like they've shipped yet. So I don't know how they're going to fit. But I have these things in here, and I, I don't really want to wait for them. <laughs> so um, I'm going to go ahead and install this in this cockpit into the fuselage and cross my fingers and hope that they fit um, without too much of an issue. Now, on Duke's models, I know he used aftermarket seats, I think, and he had to cut this section out of the these uh this rail back here so i'm gonna go ahead and cut those out before i install these and if nothing else i can just you know if it's too much of a pain i can i can always just go ahead and use the the kit seats even though they don't look that good i don't want to have to do that All right, and that is all there is to it. Just kind of dulled down that, that black a little bit, kind of blended it in. And I think I'm gonna be happy with that. So that is all I do with that. All right, so I'm almost ready. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm either gonna use some gloss Mod Podge or some, some other type of shiny um, gloss finish to fill in where the glass is supposed to be on the dials and stuff. So we'll do that here in a sec. Okay, so what I'm gonna do to create the glass is I've got this gloss Mod Podge and it's pretty thick and it does, oh my gosh, how thick that is. So I'm gonna put some down here And I'm going to add a little bit of water to it because it is so thick. Get rid of that. Now this does shrink back a lot. Now I could use UV resin, but UV resin is really, it's thicker than this. And it's just really hard to control. This isn't going to be quite as shiny unless I layer it a lot as the UV resin. Go ahead and get some of this and water this thin. I just want to thin this down, so I'm just using water to thin it to get it to the right consistency so I can apply it. And I'm going to apply it with a brush and a toothpick. 
So I'm going to use the toothpick for the real tiny stuff. Yikes, I got all those air bubbles in there. I don't really like that. Hopefully those air bubbles don't cause me any issues. Okay. So let's get out a tiny air or a tiny brush. Gonna put this in here. And this will shrink back a little bit when it dries. Okay, and then we can grab a sharpened toothpick. Oh, I must have used my sharpened toothpick to mix it. So what I like to do when I apply little stuff is I'll just sharpen up one of these toothpicks here. So I can get a nice fine point on it. And then I can use this to get in here for the real little bitty ones. Like so. Okay, so there we go. That's pretty much how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to get on with doing all the other dials. And um, once that dries, we'll put it together and drop it in the fuselage. So I'll see you in a bit. All right, so I've got the cockpit done and it's all put together. Doesn't look too bad. You know, it's not perfect. Of course, anything I do is <laughs> never perfect. But uh, yeah, I like the way this... I, I love this one piece upper fuselage. Hopefully it um, fits along the bottom pretty well. I think it does according to the videos that I've watched. But this will slide up into here and there are two posts up front and then uh, these little nibs back here that fit in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw some Tamiya Extra Thin and these little holes down here where those posts fit into. And then we'll just slide the canopy up in here. Just like so. And those should fit into those posts. I heard something pop. There we go. There we go. Seated in there nicely.
think that's in there. So then we will put some to me extra thin up here. And that should be all it needs to hold it. And a lot of that detail in that cockpit gets lost that we did, which is why I don't typically spend that much time in my cockpits. But uh, I want to try the decals out in this. And like, I mean, if, if, if I close the windscreen, I don't know how much of that you're going to see. Or if I close the canopy, I'm not sure. But it is in there. So hopefully when I get these aftermarket seats, they'll fit in there without much fuss. But you never know. Okay. So I will let this glue set up. Just want to make sure that everything looks straight and it does. Okay. So that is the cockpit on the Phantom. We will probably end it here and then we will pick up on some other little odds and ends. I've got these intakes here and I need to do some cleanup on some seam lines. And uh, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that because it looks kind of hard to get to and uh, get all that buttoned up and uh, see where the next steps take us. All right, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next episode.